Hello, I'm Lawrence Owen, and this is Sportscaster News. So, Saquon Barkley just went out and posted a little video of himself on social media doing a jump out of the water just to show his athleticism, uh, strength, and abilities. Now, the thing about that is, is that's not a huge big deal, right? Uh, a lot of people see that and go, oh my goodness, he even had a 10-pound shot put, I'm, I'm assuming it's 10 pounds, but a shot put in his hand when he jumped out. Well, just what, two weeks ago, we saw Tristan Wirfs from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, offensive lineman, 320-pound man, do the exact same thing. Granted, he didn't have the extra weight in his hands, but he was able to do it. It's something that is all about how you, it's body control, muscle control. Okay, that has a lot to do with it. We're not here to talk about Saquon Barkley or Tristan Wirfs or anything like that. We're, we're, we're actually, well, we are talk, to talk about Saquon Barkley, but not him jumping out of pools. It's more like him jumping over defensive players while he runs down for a touchdown, right? So we're here to look at the New York Giants 2020 outlook and then a prediction for the season. Now, New York did go out and pick up a few people in the draft this year. As many of you know, they also picked up Dion Lewis from the Titans, who was previously with New England, to help give Saquon Barkley a little bit of breathing room. He, Dion's more of that third down kind of guy now. It's not like Saquon Barkley can't be that third down guy as well. He's absolutely a beast when it comes to receiving the football. He showed it over his first two seasons. Dion, however, is more of a scat back type guy where Saquon is more of a do-it-all, um, just give him the ball over and over and over and over type guy. Now, they did also pick up a former Patriot. Did not live up to expectations. So the Giants went out and picked up a couple offensive tackles in the draft. Their, the fourth pick in the draft was Andrew Thomas. But he's not going to be playing that left tackle position. That's going to be left to Nate Soldier because Soldier's contract is absolutely devastating this season. Right? 16 million dead money. All right? A $19.5 million cap hit. He was signed in 2018 for a four-year deal, $62 million. Wow. That's massive. Simply put, if he plays this season, and he plays well, he'll probably be cut for the 2021 season. If he does not play well, he will probably be cut because the Giants will save $14 million in cap space. Granted, they'll still have six and a half million on their dead money, but it's still a $14 million savings. And then you will see Andrew Thomas move to Nate Soldier's spot. This could actually happen during the season if Nate Soldier is not able to bring back what he was once was with New England. If he still starts off just as bad as he was playing last season, you'll see Andrew Thomas most likely move to that spot and Matt Pert moved up to right tackle. The center, of course, Spencer Pulley. You got Kevin Zietler at right guard and left guard is Will Hernandez, who was picked up as well in the draft not very long ago. The Giants have been attempting to put together an offensive line for Saquon Barkley since he's been there. Daniel Jones, obviously, last season, showed out pretty good. He didn't do too bad. His biggest issue was 12 fumbles while dropping back for the pass and 6 fumbles while he was taking off on the run. That's 18 fumbles in a season. In a season where he didn't even play the full year right I mean good lord that's not good he played 13 games 13 games and had 18 fumbles 
Now, the good thing about that is Daniel Jones, 18 fumbles. Fumble issues can be corrected. Lamar Jackson also had a crap ton of fumbles as well. They can be corrected. Um, however, Daniel Jones also tends to rely a lot on his receivers throwing the football in some really tight spaces and hoping that his receivers can win the 50-50 catch. Uh, now, that helped out quite a bit, but his touchdown-to-interception ratio is 2-1. to one. He had 24 touchdowns as opposed to 12 interceptions last year in those 13 games. I would like to see Jones be a little bit more safe with that football considering considering the receivers he has is pretty impressive. Okay? Now, the receivers obviously, you have Deion Lewis and Saquon Barkley out of the backfield. But you have Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate, Darius Slayton. Even Corey Coleman is there. Now, Slayton is a guy who I watched and can make some absolute fantastic one-handed circus catches, right? Golden Tate is a guy who I believe can make big plays happen just because he's been around a while and he's got that chip on his shoulder. He does not like to be tackled. You try to tackle him, he does everything he can to stay on his feet and continue to move on to get extra yards. Evan Ingram, the tight end, I believe is a future pro bowler in the NFL. I believe Evan Ingram has a chance to be that. With that being said, this offense actually could get much, much better as long as that offensive line steps up and Daniel Jones becomes a little bit more protective of the football. Now, granted, Daniel Jones had to run for his life due to that offensive line, especially Nate Soldier, not being able to pick up where he was off, and the right tackle was not very good as well. So, increase uh, strength on the offensive line, hopefully, will make it so Daniel will have more time to throw the football and not have to take off nearly as much or make, you know, mistakes like he has in the past. Defensively, of course, they have Dexter Lawrence, Dalvin Tomlinson, and Leonard Williams, who they had a midseason trade last year with the Jets for. I would like to see Leonard Williams step up big time. He has yet to really be much of a pass rush specialist, but he's very, very good at clogging lanes. And very athletic as well. But with his athleticism, he's kind of like Jadavian Clowney in that aspect. Good at clogging lanes, good against the run, can get pressures on quarterbacks, but does not seem to be able to really get to the quarterback when he's needed. Now, being that this is a 3-4 defense, it's not necessarily his job to do that. The job to do that are those outside linebackers, Marcus Golden, you know, and Lorenzo Carter. They also have Blake Martinez and David Mayo at the inside linebackers. This is a linebacking core that I believe really needs to step up as well, more so than the defensive line. I think the defensive line has the talent. I think they can do their job in clogging lanes, but those linebackers really need to step up. However, it has a lot to do with whether or not they can get pressure on the quarterback. Last season, they did a decent job. They sent a lot of blitzes. I watched some plays where even against teams like New England, who has a very good offensive line, the Giants would send just an overwhelming amount of blitzes against Tom Brady. I think that they could do that more so often this season, especially against, say, guys like uh, Dak Prescott, um, Washington, you know, those, Carson Wentz, those blitzes, they get to the quarterbacks, they really can do a lot of damage. I don't know if we're going to see much out of DeAndre Baker this year, even though he is the starter at left corner. As many of you know, he is 
in that whole situation where there was that robbery. We still need to see what's going to come out of that. Jabril Peppers is a very underrated strong safety in the NFL. Very athletic, good hitter. I believe with a little bit more talent around him, especially up front, if those linebackers can step up and get more pressure on quarterbacks, I think Jabril Peppers could really stand out. Beside him is Xavier McKinney. The Giants' first round pick this past season. I think we will love to see McKinney become a very good free safety. Someone who could go out there and help uh, pick off any kind of overthrow passes. And then, of course, James Bradbury on the other side of the cornerback position. So, that's basically the starting lineups for the New York football Giants. I think... They're a pretty up-and-coming team. I'm afraid that they're still not good enough to compete with the Eagles or the Cowboys this year for the division. I don't believe they will make the playoffs. But when you have Saquon Barkley and the wide receivers that I believe are actually halfway decent. If Daniel, if that offensive line can really just step up and Daniel Jones be more safe with that football, they could score with a lot of people. I don't think they're a bottom five team in the NFL, but I definitely don't think they're a top 10 team in the NFL either. So, with that being said, Let's go look at the schedule, right? And see whether or not I believe that there'll even be an eight and eight team in this season. You're still here? Awesome! Thanks for watching this stream. Please, if you have a moment of your time, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you're notified next time I go live. And if you got a few extra seconds, hit that description down there below the video and check out all the places that you can follow me, whether it be Sportscaster here on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and there's a couple places where you can help donate to my channel. That way I can continue to bring all this content to you. Thank you for your support. Now, let's get back to the video. Week 1, September 14th, primetime game, 7-15. Steelers come and see them at home, right there in New York. Now, as you know, New York will not have any fans in the stands this year. It's been announced already <coughs> for either the Giants or the Jets. And Pittsburgh's going to come in. Ben, it's going to be Big Ben's first game in a very, very long time. The Steelers' defense is very aggressive, very opportunistic. And it's going to be a very big challenge for the Giants' offensive line. I believe the Giants could use a lot of screens here. Catch Pittsburgh in serious blitzing issues. I think that the Giants could could very well use these running back screens and wide excuse me, wide receiver screens and possibly give the Steelers more of a challenge than what they believe. I'm still going to pick the Steelers to come into New York and win, but I think this is a tighter game than a lot of people give it credit for. Then you have the Giants. Going to the Windy City against the Chicago Bears. Now, the Bears, again, very good, solid defense. Good at rushing the passer. It's going to be up to this offensive line to protect Daniel Jones. You're going to see this quite a bit throughout this. A lot of good defenses the Giants play against. I think, however, that the Giants have enough offense to outscore the Bears. I think the Giants come out of Week 2, 1-1. One one. Then the Giants host San Francisco. 
1 p.m. on September 27th. This is a game I just, I don't think that the Giants can win this game. I believe that this is going to be a very low scoring game. I do not believe either team is going to score over 20 points. I think it's going to be a 17-14 type game. I think the Niners are going to basically hold down the fort. They're going to be in control most of the game. Even though the game will be close, I believe the Niners will control it. And I believe the Niners will come into New York and win. So the Giants will start off 1-2. and two. Then the Giants go to L.A. and face the Rams. 4 o'clock game on October 4th. This is interesting. Again, you know, three weeks in a row, you got some decent defenses. But the Rams' offense is hurting. They don't have their number one receiver no more. They don't have their number one running back no more. I am not as high on the Rams as a lot of people are. I think the Giants have the offense to actually come in and beat the Rams. That's right. I said it. I think this is going to be an upset game. I think the Giants will be able, even with Aaron Donald coming down, the strength of this offensive line, I believe, is right there in the middle with Will Hernandez and them. I think the Giants will be able to score enough to beat the Rams but barely. This will be a, a game I believe that both teams will score high 20s. I think it'll be like a 25 to 28 game. And I got the Giants winning and Daniel Jones proving finally that he can protect that football against a decent pass rush. Then the Giants go to Dallas to face the Cowboys. America's team. I'm sorry, Giants. I have the Cowboys beating you in Dallas. Why? Because as good as an offense that I believe the Giants have, I think the Cowboys offense is just that much better. I believe the Cowboys also have a pretty good defense as well. I don't think the Giants defense will be able to handle all all the situations that the Cowboys can bring. I don't believe they have a good enough pass rush to get to, to Dak Prescott enough to really rattle him. You might be able to hold Zeke down to under 100 yards, but with that receiving tandem that, that the Cowboys have right now, I just don't think that you can hold this aerial attack down well enough. The Cowboys win. So, that makes the Giants 2 and 3 through 5 weeks. Then the Washington football team comes to the Giants. I'm sorry, the Washington football team is just a huge mess right now. I got the Giants sweeping them. No. You know what? I'll have them split because I believe that Washington may have a chance at home against the Giants. But right now, they're going to the Giants, so they win their third game. They are 3-3 three and three after six weeks. Now we're going to start looking. It's, it starts getting scary. Now the Giants go to Philadelphia. There's just... That D-line on, on the Eagles is just so dominant. And as I said, I don't know if the Giants' offensive line is fixed or not. I got the Eagles winning this game. Then you have the Buccaneers coming to New York. November 2nd. It's a primetime game, and we all know Tom Brady loves primetime games. Buccaneers come in and just blast the Giants. Now, we know... Back in the day, Eli Manning had Tom Brady's number, at least in New England. I don't think this is the situation that we'll see at this point in time. This is a completely different team, different head coach, different offense. This is a high-flying offense. Yes, the Giants, as a football team, beat a high-flying offense and kept them from going undefeated back in the day. But this is a completely different team on both sides. I got the Buccaneers winning in prime time on November 2nd. 
Then the Giants go to Washington. Again, I said they split. I think Washington finally wins the game at this point. And the Giants still only have three wins. The Eagles go to the Giants on November 15th. Not a game that I think that the Giants are going to win here. I really don't. Um, it's a it's a regular 1 o'clock game. And as much as I like, like I said, as much as I like what the Giants are, are going with with their offense, I just, I think the Eagles defensive line is just too potent. I think they're going to give too much of pressure. Uh, I think they'll stop Barkley. I think they'll get in Daniel Jones' face too much. And I've got, even though this will be a knockout, dragout fight, I got the Eagles going into New York and pulling off the win. Then the Giants go to Cincinnati. I am not big on the Bengals. I am not big on the Bengals. I know they have Joe Burrow. I know they have a wide receiver. But that's all that I see, really, that they have besides Joe Mixon. And generally, rookie wide receivers do not do well their first year. Generally, rookie quarterbacks do not do well their first year. I see this being a learning curve for the entire offense besides Joe Mixon. I got the Giants going into Cincinnati and winning. That's four wins now for the Giants. Then they go into Seattle, December 6th. It's a four o'clock game. Seattle just picked up a certain strong safety named Jamal Adams. That's going to help them big time against the run. Saquon Barkley is going to have issues. Seattle was giving up 4.9 yards per carry against running backs last year, which was 28th in the NFL, tied with Kansas City. But Jamal Adams is going to help that a lot, and I have the Giants losing to Seattle on December 6th. The Cardinals go to New York. I have them, I have the Cardinals and the Giants actually very tight knit game. I think the Cardinals can beat the Giants. And I have the Cardinals coming in and beating the Giants. And the only reason I have that is that I don't think the Giants have enough pass rush to get to that quarterback. I think Kyler Murray is just too quick, too fast. I think by this time, it's mid-December It'd be near the end of his second season. I think Kyler Murray is going to make a big strides this year. And he's got weapons. He's got weapons. I've got the Cardinals going into the Giants and beating them. Then the Browns go to the Giants. Cleveland Browns. December 20th. It's another 1 o'clock game. This is tough. Tough game. It really depends upon what Browns team you're going to see come into the Giants. If you have a completely distracted football team because the Browns have not done well all season and you still have all those personalities thinking about themselves rather than the actual team themselves as a team, I think the Giants have a really good shot at beating the Browns. However... I'm not expecting that from the Browns this season. I believe that Baker, Mayfield, and Nick Chubb, and their former wide receiver, OBJ, I believe they're going to be very, very focused in this game. I think they're going to be focused all season. I don't think they're going to let their um, personalities hamper themselves. They're going to be very, very focused. I think the Browns pull it together this season and the Giants are just going to be another problem for them. But I think the Browns come in. OBJ gets his win over his former team and the Giants still only have four wins with only two weeks left. And it's not looking good because then the Giants on the 27th of December, two days after Christmas, go to the Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore has a very, very good defense. Very good pass defense. They were not as good against the run, though, and Saquon Barkley is a very good running back. 
in the NFL. As you know, you saw what King Henry of the Titans did to the Ravens in the playoffs last season. And Saquon Barkley is that level of running back. Very fast, strong, big, powerful running back. This is a game where it really depends where the Ravens are at this point. Now, traditionally, it's in Baltimore. I think the Giants have a very slim chance at winning this, but it's only like a 20% chance, I think. I think the Ravens take care of business and take this game. Giant, uh, the Cowboys then finish off going to the Giants in New York on the 3rd of January. This could be an interesting game. This could Now normally I would have the Cowboys winning even going to New York. But it's January 3rd. This is going to be a cold cold possibly snowy game, right? And yes, Zeke can run the football. Yes, Dak Prescott can run the football. But guess what? So can Saquon Barkley. So can Daniel Jones. And the Giants are a team that are okay about playing out in the weather. The Cowboys are a team that play in 90 degree heat and sunshine all the time. I'm going to give the Giants the upset in week 17 against the Cowboys. I think the Giants have a chance at beating them because this is not going to be a game where Dak's going to want to throw the football around. I think this is a game that's going to favor the Giants just because of weather. And it's going to play into their style of play. So there you have it. I have the the New York football giants in 2020 going 5 and 11. I'm sorry, Giants fans. That's just what I see on the schedule. Can they win more games? Absolutely. It really depends upon that offensive line, like I said earlier, and whether or not Daniel Jones can limit those turnovers, especially the fumbles. He had 30 turnovers last year. 30. 18 fumbles and 12 picks. 30 turnovers. As opposed to 24 touchdowns thrown. I think he had two touchdowns on the ground, right? Let's look at that. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Yes. So he had 26 touchdowns as opposed to 30 turnovers. My goodness. He's got to learn to hold, take care of that football. I think he will do much better this year. I'm just worried about that offensive line. How is Nate Soldier going to look this year? How's that interior going to look this year? They have the offensive firepower. But my biggest questions really is their cornerbacks, pass rushing linebackers, and their offensive line. Until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen, and I want you to have a good one. Just because a guy's a player is not a household name doesn't mean we can't make him a household name.